time to talk about EU researchers in the UK science base and what they should do now. UK science is multinational, of course, at least in academia, about 15% are from elsewhere in the EU. Their fate is very much uncertain at the moment. So I asked a Polish academic at the University of Oxford, Joanna Bagniowska, what she thinks they should be doing now. So over to you, Joanna. Hi, I'm Joanna. I'm a Polish zoologist and I came to the UK 10 years ago to get a master's and a doctorate from Oxford University. I now work as a teaching fellow at the University of Reading. I have really enjoyed my time in Britain. That is, until the day after the EU referendum, when all of a sudden things started looking a bit less peachy. So if, like me, you're a foreign scientist in post-referendum UK and you're feeling a bit worried about the future, listen up. Here are four things that you might want to consider doing. First of all, write to your MP. When the Brits are unhappy with their lives, it seems that the go-to solution is write to your MP. Many foreigners feel that because they have no right to vote in the general election, their voices will not be considered by the elected representatives. This is not the case. As constituents, you have rights and you can raise queries, and it is your local MP's job to respond to these. Think of it this way, the children in the constituency also cannot vote, but the MPs are still required to speak up for their rights. Writing to MPs is particularly important now, since on November 3rd, the High Court ruled that the Parliament must vote on whether the UK can leave the EU. In your letter, address a specific issue and ask for a concrete outcome. Ask about an upcoming vote and explain why it is important to you or other people in your community. Suggest actions. You can also attend an MP surgery, which might provide a greater opportunity for discussion. Number two, if you're an EU citizen, get that permanent residence card. With the current political climate, it's a safety measure. I fear that a couple of years from now, a permanent residence card could be an essential when applying for jobs, so it's better to be prepared. Check if you're eligible. You should have lived in the UK for at least five years and fulfilled other criteria outlined on the Home Office website. The process is unfortunately not as straightforward as it might seem. Bear in mind caveats such as the comprehensive sickness insurance, which you might not have had if you came to the UK for university studies. If you had picked strawberries for the last six years like a good immigrant, you'd be a British citizen by now. But if you chose to do a PhD instead, you might be going back to square one. A useful thing to remember is that local authorities, such as city or county councils, offer nationality checking services. They will check if your application form is completed correctly and if your supporting documentation is appropriate. This is not a free service, but it is likely to save you a lot of time and grief later in the process. Number three, lobby at your workplace. Likely, you are not the only person at your workplace affected by the EU referendum outcome. So identify whether helping you and the others might be in line with the company's policy, for instance, through promoting diversity or employee welfare. You could try to organize a meeting with a lawyer for the EU employees to assist with queries about permanent residence and immigration issues. For instance, will parental leave contribute towards the residency requirement or not? Imperial College provides legal and financial support for their EEA employees, and which institution wouldn't want to be like Imperial College? You can also create a support group. It may come in handy if an international employee is being harassed on the basis of their nationality or ethnicity. Try to identify safety points at work, welfare officers, diversity deans, and so on. Number four, do science outreach. This shows the general public that immigrants are not just lazy benefit scroungers. Getting people enthusiastic and knowledgeable about science is generally good for the society, especially now that we're flooded with heaps of unfiltered information. Also, I'm still hoping to convince the UK that maybe it does need experts after all. There are plenty of initiatives such as Soapbox Science, Science Slam, or I'm a scientist, get me out of here. You can give talks at schools and interest groups, talk about your research in a pub, do science stand-up comedy. If you're looking for a creative outlet, just get in touch. Do you have any other suggestions? Please post them in the comment section below. And good luck.